Hey guys, welcome back. This is Shiro Sagi, and this is, I believe, part three of Katawa Shoujo. We just met Lily, and we also just finally found the library we've been looking for. So, without further talking, let's get right into that and pick up where we were. To the left is the wooden library counter, with the library proper being on the right. It easily dwarfs my old school's library, with a distinct smell of old books giving the place an almost old world air. There doesn't seem to be a lot of students here. Considering the time, it isn't a big surprise. Everyone's probably either in the school grounds or the dorms. Hugo, are you here? She says it to thin air since the librarian doesn't seem to be present and of course Lily can't see this. What's unexpected is that it draws a reaction. Something from under the counter thuds against it, followed by a quiet wail. Oh! The origin, apparently the librarian, quickly crawls out and bounces up to extremely rigid attention. Hi, Lily! How can I help you? Her voice is strained in a failing attempt to sound casual and she's rubbing the back of her head. She's a derp derpington! Good afternoon. What happened just now? I heard a strange sound. It's nothing. I just hit my head. See, I dropped an eraser under my desk and while I was looking for it, a pencil dropped and I was looking for both of them you came and surprised me. Are you alright? I'm sorry. I couldn't know. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry for making you worry. This is nothing. I've had worse happen to me. She's quick to reverse Lily's apologies, almost frantically trying to push aside the possibility that she could be in any way inconvenienced by bashing her head on the counter. Yes, worse things have happened. <laughs> the girl fidgets with her fingers as Lily doesn't seem to drop her concerned expression. And then she shuffles some papers around the counter for no reason. A little shorter than Lily, replete with glasses, freckles, and a very troubled look. She seems to fit a library perfectly. Oh, she's a nerd. She looks like a nerd. She talks like a nerd. She's a nerd. She works in the library. Ah, Lily! Did you get a message? Message? Hmm. Oh, the two imported books that arrived. Right, right, they finally came. Can't believe it took so long, but... Amidst her celebrations, partially for managing to change the topic, I'm sure, she notices me from the corner of her eye and freezes on the spot when she does. Oh no, I'm sorry for not noticing you before. Did you need to check out a book? Or return one? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The way she can go so she can so quickly shift between moods is a little unsettling. He is with me, Yuko. This is Hisao, a new student. Hisao, this is Yuko, the school librarian. Pleased to meet you. Hisao, right, Hisao. Pleased to meet you too, Hisao. For a second, she visibly attempts to engrave the name on her mind so she won't forget. Yuko often arranges to import foreign books in Braille for me. Would you like to tell Hisao a little something about the library? Lily's innocent suggestion is met with an expression of abject terror. I... please, Lily, I can't. I don't know what he could be interested in. <laughs> this is too much responsibility. How it's any responsibility at all, I don't get. But her objection is so sincere, I don't doubt for a second that she would rather disembowel herself on the spot than tell me where the light novels are. But... So, there are a lot of books in Braille here? I attempt to save the day by asking the first thing that pops into my head. It seems to work at least partially, as Yuko seems to... not exactly relax, but at least looks slightly less tense. Poor thing. Well, I think about a third or fourth of Yamaku's library is either in Braille or audio. Makes sense, given all the blind students that'd be here. If it's only that, how come this library is so big in the first place? Um, well, we get a lot of new books regularly because the library is adequately endowed. That's probably why. 
They spend more on new books than on my salary. And then I have to organize and shelve all of them. It's so troublesome and they waste so much. I wish I could quit this job. <laughs> she hates her job and she is not afraid to say so. A very awkward silence follows this revelation of too much information. Um, I'll go check the aisles then, if you don't mind. It's probably best for all of us if she doesn't keep talking to me. Very well. Meanwhile, Yuko, I would have those books if it's alright with you. My first impression was right. The library is surprisingly big. Ambling down the narrow aisles, I studied the spines of the books in random order, occasionally sliding one out to read the blurb, taking it with me if it looks good. In a few moments, I have a respectable stack of books in my arms. I guess I'll never be stuck for a choice in here. The normality of the library sinks in. Sure, there are large print and braille books scattered throughout, but it is what it is. A library. It's as if the calm mood from the room I had tea with Lillian snuck with us in here, unless it was here to begin with. Something about that puts me at ease, just like before. I reach the end of the aisle and find a collection of desks set up for study or personal reading. Going a little further, though, I know I discover a nice quiet corner at the back. While the rest of the library has the odd student sitting at a desk, either reading or stealthily sleeping, the back is pretty much deserted. As I glance around, I see someone who I recognize sitting on one of the several bean bags. It's a dark-haired girl from my class, the one who snuck out of the classroom earlier. She's reading a book, keeping it close to her face, which makes her look like she's really into it. From the way she was acting today, I had her pegged as more of a delinquent than a bookworm. In fact, her mysterious disappearance in the class raises all sorts of whys in my head. Intrigue floats slowly, but I surely hold the surface. And before I know it, I'm walking toward the mysterious long-haired girl. I guess there's no harm in introducing myself as I would with anyone else. She's a classmate, after all. Walking over to another beanbag, I take a seat and lay my books beside it. The girl starts looking scaredly up at me from underneath her fringe. This is the first time I've seen her this close. Underneath her long, dense bangs, I can see that part of her face, at least a third if not half, is pretty badly scarred. I wonder why. My eyes are immediately drawn to the scars, subconsciously peeking past her hair until they meet her own eyes. For a second I'm shocked, and divert my eyes to the book in her hands before I realize that looking away probably only makes it worse. It takes too many seconds to collect myself and I remember what I walked up to her for. I'm gonna say I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. It... it's okay. The girl certainly doesn't look like it's okay, but I let it slide. So, um, do you mind if I sit here? She just seems to be very uncertain whether it's okay or not for me to sit, but finally she nods. Just a little. Oh, okay. I take the seat next to her, and she hides herself behind her book. Life of Pi. Never heard of it. They made a movie of that, didn't they? Like, isn't that like a real book? So, er, uh, sorry again for startling you. I'm Hisao. She looks up from her book, stalling a little before replying. I... no. We are in the same, same class. Her speech is stilted and so quiet that it's barely audible even in the still library. Somehow I think that my delinquent impression of her was wrong. Ha, ha, ha Hanako. I'm Hanako. I resist the urge to say, that's a nice name, just to have something to say, but really it's the only thing you can think of. I feel like an idiot. Everyone here must be used to being different to each other, and here I am being all bothered and fussed about that kind of thing. Don't let me interrupt your reading. I'll just check these books if you don't mind. She nods a little and sighs a little sigh of relief. Aw, she's sort of scared. So I try to read the covers and the introductions of the books I picked up, and she buries her face in her book. 
Uncomfortable silence consumes us. My eyes still wander to her direction, and I sneak peeks at her flowing hair and the scars it's hiding. After a while, I realize she's doing the same, and only pretending to be immersed. Oops. In the life of Pi. Her gaze is not inquisitive at all, though. It darts around like a scared rabbit. Oh, well, she has social anxiety, probably. When our gazes finally meet, the chain reaction is unstoppable. She stands up forcefully from the beanbag and takes a deep breath. I. I. I? I've got to go do something. Without warning, Hanako takes off and runs towards the counter. Her hair life hair-like takeoff catches me so off guard that I don't manage to go after her until she has a good head start. By the time I reach the counter, she's nowhere to be seen. Lily and Yuko are happily chatting away. Knowing that I won't be able to catch Hanako myself, I approach the girls. Hey, did you see or notice a girl run past here? Um, maybe. What did she look like? Long dark hair, kinda shy. She had, well, some scars on her face. You wouldn't be talking about Hanako, would you? Yeah, that's her. I saw her reading and tried to talk to her. But I think I scared her off or something. Oh dear. Yuko, would you excuse me? I had better try and find her. Sh sure, I'll just hold on to these until you come back. Um, what's going on? I'm sorry, but I'll have to explain to you some other time. Right. I'll see you later, then. Lily hastily grabs her cane and hurries out of the library, leaving me alone with Yuko. I don't think I'll ever get the hang of this place. Did I do something wrong? What did you do? Nothing. I was just looking for some books, and then she got this fit and ran off. The most offending thing I can think of was that I might have looked at her general direction a few times. Well, she is a very timid girl. You have to be very careful around her. She can be very jumpy, I think, and she's not accustomed to talking with other people. Isn't that a bit... strange? I wonder... It's just how she is, I think. Yuko doesn't sound at all that convincing. Then again, maybe this is just the norm around here. Everyone has their own problems or else I wouldn't be here. But how should I deal with these people? Forcing myself to act overly casual only makes me feel phony. Like I was supposed to be ignoring the elephant in the room. Yuko fidgets, looking like she wants to say something to that but resists it. I think it's an elephant, only if you feel that way. I guess she doesn't have a good sense of self-restraint. It makes me smile, and she blushes heavily. What? what? That sounds stupid. No, no, it sounded really wise. I guess you're right. It's more about me than anyone else. Neither of us has anything to add, so Yuko fills the silence by shuffling some papers around. People who have papers on their desks really like doing that. Did you find any books? I should be closing soon. I mean, this library should be closing. But I have to do it. I hope, that's not incon I hope it's not too inconvenient for you. Oh yeah, I want some books, but I left them over there because... I'll just go get them. I fetch my stack of books from behind the beanbags where Hanako and I were sitting and returned to the counter. Wow, you read a lot, don't you? I surprised myself with that too, honestly. At least when I really think about it. I had a lot of free time earlier this year, so I just kind of... started reading books to fill the time. I couldn't do much else. I see. But she doesn't really say anything else, just checks out my books for me. I guess this is what they call tact. Holding the library books with one arm, I troll my pocket for the key to the door. A sudden sound from behind startles me, making me nearly drop the books I'm carrying or the key that I almost managed to get into the lock. Who is it? I turn around to see who is talking to me. It's Kenji. Harry Potter lookalike. Extraordinaire. <laughs> he seems to be in a friendly mood, although the light glinting off his glasses in the dark gives him a sinister look. It's just me. This makes him pause and lick his lips nervously. Who is me? I don't know anyone called me. 
Are you some new guy again? His voice is suddenly strained and quick. Yes, but we've met before. Yesterday. I don't think so. I would remember someone who I met only yesterday. When was that? What day is it today? I try to ignore him. Is he joking or what? Prove that we've met before. You live across the hall. You're Kenji. Kenji jumps back, his eyes filled with an uncomprehending fear. How do you know my name? Damn, this can only mean one of two things. Either we have met, and you are telling the truth, or I just can't remember it, or you are a spy. He pauses. A psychic spy. His eyes dart around me, trying to peek into my room. <laughs> Although it's hard to believe he can see anything through those thick glasses. His mood swung from friendly to manic in less than a minute. I'm not psychic. How do I know that? I'm not a mind reader. Kenji points a finger in my face damningly. Unlike you. Stop that, man. We met yesterday. What's wrong with you? I live in this room. Lies. If you think you can pass as he saw just because I'm legally blind, you are sorely mistaken. You don't even look like him. I mean, the resemblance is real. Real slim. Maybe at a distance, but who do you think you're kidding? I want to grab him by the shoulders and shake him. Exasperated, I rub my eyes and let out a heavy sigh. <sighs> Stay there. Kenji comes closer, one careful step at a time. I stay still, lest he assault me physically, although I doubt he could do much damage even if he did. Oh wait, I see it now. Damn, it really is you. Sighing again, and then once again for good measure, I step backwards, just in case. What's up, man? You don't look too good. I think. Something wrong? I don't know, just had something stupid happen to me. These stupid things, actually. Even if you discount this one. I can't get a proper touch on other people here. And I have no idea if it's because of me or because of them. I don't know why I'm telling this to Kenji. It's not like we've had any contact either. That's rough, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry about calling you a sick spy and all, but you can never be too careful. It's the hard reality we live in. I'm slowly starting to think that Kenji isn't necessarily living in the same reality as the rest of us. You see? This is how it is, this world. There's no justice. You see, even when I lose, I win. Because I don't lose the lesson. What does that even mean? It doesn't matter. He dismisses it flatly with a wave of his hand. You're a weird kid. So what happened? Why the long face? Do you have a long face? <sighs> it's nothing. I just scared some girl off accidentally. Literally, too. She actually ran away from me. It was my fault, really, I think. Think. I'm not really used to all this yet. A girl? A cute one? Cute? That's a hard question. She had a nice body and really beautiful hair. But the face. I guess it could go either way. She was cute. Yeah, cute, I guess. I knew it. There are a lot of cute girls here. A strangely disproportionate amount. I believe this is one of the dark secrets of this school. I tried to warn you, man. But did you listen? I don't remember any such warning. Dark secrets? Yes, dark secrets. Extremely dark. Like a black hole. Have you noticed the number of girls in this school is slightly but significantly higher than the number of boys? It's like 60-40. He turns his head to the left and stares off into the distance at nothing. Why is it like this? I mean, to the untrained eye, it doesn't appear to be that bad. But that is a full 20%. One would think that a school with such a huge pool of women would be a man's dream, but no. What I am about to tell you could talk, could blow your mind. Are you ready? I don't know where this is going, but I think I won't be missing much by cutting out now. No, I am not ready. I only get as far as turning the door or not before Kenji starts talking again, showing that he doesn't really care if my mind is blown or not. I believe that this school is a battleground, the site of a feminist infiltration. This disparity of the number of men to women is a clear sign of how far they have come. In case this cold war turns hot, they will have superiority in numbers. Just another skirmish in the eternal war against the forces of the feminists. They're everywhere, 
in Japan, women outnumber men. It's not a 60-40 split, but it's only a matter of time, man. Even in America, women are the majority by a hair. They're building up their numbers. In the past, the buildup of a military has always been the clearest sign of imminent war. Japan is just the first step. Our economy is badass, and the country itself is small and isolated. He had a huge part of the Pacific in terms of political value. The perfect target. They are so cunning, as expected of women. Soon, the day will come when... Kenji's voice trails off ominously. He is crazy. That is why you can't trust them. They will string you along and then kill you just as they killed me. You will end up just like me. Oh, hell no. <laughs> I can't stop myself from blurting it out. Hey, what the hell does that mean? You said it, not me. It's the best I can think of. So, you're not supposed to say something like that? Damn, so rude. Where was I? Oh yeah, vast feminist conspiracy. Stop it. Stop. I lost your way. Way, wait, I lost you. Way, way back there somewhere. Somewhere around feminist infiltration. Too hard to follow? It's cool. I have some graphs and stuff in my room. And puppets. You like puppets? No puppets. You don't like puppets. Okay, graphs are still cool too. Yeah, graphs are still cool though, right? He speaks energetically, responding almost before I'm done talking. Moving his hands in an animated way as he continues to rant on. This is too strange. I had him pegged as relatively normal, but it's clear that I was wrong. Something on your mind, dude? Just thinking about what it's like to be the last sane man in an insane world. Kenji frowns, looking deeply upset. You mean that's you? That can't be, because I'm the last sane man in an insane world. That's my dream. You can't just steal a man's dream. What the hell? There can't be at least- They can't be two last sane men. It would invalidate the whole last part. And that part is kind of important. There can only be one. Like in that foreign movie where there could only be one. And in the end, there is only one dude left. Because that was the point. I have never seen anyone talk so heatedly and so defensively about absolutely nothing before. Anyway, if you wait here, I can get my graphs. I also have a list of the other dark and complex conspiracies that the school holds, as tangled as... Quick, finish my analogy for me. Be a pal. I'm going to go to bed now. It's extremely late. That doesn't sound like an analogy, but huh, whatever. I like you. You seem like a cool dude. Most people don't understand what I'm talking about when I try to explain the vast feminist conspiracy to them. Denial is a terrible thing. Later. He claps me on the back and then vanishes into his room so quickly and quietly it's like he didn't even open the door. And instead walked right through like a ghost. I'm gonna stay away from him. He's kind of freaky and weird. Kind of. Yeah, just a little bit. I don't know if I can fully digest what just happened, so I give up and just go to my room, kicking off my shoes before falling face first into bed. It takes me some time to relax and get up so I can get started on homework. It's because the sheets are cool and comforting against my cheeks. And it feels good just lying there with my eyes closed. School is like some kind of bizarre and surreal island. It's isolated on top of a mountain. And each person is stranger than the last. I just can't seem to fit in. What irony. One would think that fitting in a place that's made for people who are unfit for anywhere else would be easy. Maybe I'm trying too hard. Although I say that, it doesn't help take the edge off. The words are left echoing off my empty walls. I guess it's not as bad as I expected, though. This place really is more a school and less a hospital pretending it's a school than I thought it would be. If nothing else, the scenery is beautiful. I open one eye, seeing the school books and bottles of pills arranged side by side on my desktop. Maybe this place is too much like a normal school after all. Ooh, we got an ending. We got a part. What is this? It's like an intermission? Ah, 
I feel very tired this morning, probably because yesterday itself was a very tiring day. On top of that, I woke up far earlier than necessary. After saying hi to Shizune and Misha, I start doing the work as instructed from the board. It already looks like today is going to be heavy. I don't have a problem with that now, though. Shizune and Misha might jump on me trying to get an answer about whether or not I've decided to join the student council. Even if it's just one day. I wouldn't put it past them to try, and I don't have an answer for them if they do. So this situation is convenient for me. About ten minutes into class, Hanako walks in and takes a seat, but no one looks at her. The teacher doesn't even comment on her lateness. He does, however, stop us to say that we're going to break into groups again. I turn my head and see that Shizune and Misha are looking at me. Shizune gives me a smile that is equal parts cute and menacing. <laughs> this is a smile that says, We have you now. There is no escape. He chan looks like we're going to be together again. Yay, yay! Misha leans sideways while Shizune pushes her desk closer to mine. There really is no escape now unless I were to jump through the window. Jumping out the window isn't the best option, sadly. What's wrong, Hee-chan? Oh, Hee-chan, have you been thinking about what you said yesterday? You said that you would think about joining the student council, didn't you? It's okay, Hee-chan. We were talking about it after you left, and it would be so rude to expect you to already have an answer for us this early, right? Right. <laughs> I'm so happy to know you two are able to have a laugh at my expense, and even more pleased to know that you both know how crazy the two of you can be. Now that that's over, Shizune snaps back into serious mode and smacks today's assignment with the back of her hand in an overly dramatic and important way. When I actually look at the stuff, it's mostly just reading. In fact, there are only two problems. I almost want to say something about how her rush to get started seems a bit much, considering the small amount of work. In fact, Shizune probably knows how little there is and simply doesn't care. Yeah, it seems like the workload doesn't matter to her as much as the fact that there is work. The actual amount is unimportant. She approaches everything with the same level of ambition. While I'm reading, I let my eyes wander around the room and catch Hanako trying her hand at solving the problems. It looks like she's working alone. Oh, I want to help her. I can't remember seeing her working with other people before. She's so lonely and sad. I want to help her out. Fuck these two. <laughs> Thinking back to how shy he, she is, it's understandable. Hey, that girl over there. Huh? Who, Hichan? Her, Hanako, over there. Does she always work alone? I think so, Hichan. <coughs> oh, bless me. Do you feel sorry for her because she's alone? I was just thinking that maybe she could work with us or something. Hmm. No, I don't think she would. That would be a good idea, He Chan. Why not? She Chan wouldn't get along with her. Why? Misha shuffles around the question, letting out a laugh that sounds very strange. <laughs> it's nervous, but still has that lilting up and down quality present in everything she says. Just because He Chan. By now, Shizune has noticed our conversation. And it makes me realize again how Misha has been saying everything she's been saying this whole time. What, Shichan? The friend of my enemy is my enemy? That sounds so harsh. I'm not going to say that. You said it anyway. I know, Hee-chan. It's fine if you overhear. I wonder if this is Misha's way of keeping things fair, since without her, I wouldn't be able to understand the things Shuzne is saying, and vice versa. Is that also why she signs all the time so there's never a conversation Shizune will be left out of? Anyway, we should start on the problems now, Hee-chan. They're being so mean, I want to help Hanako. I think that's the girl I might want to go after in this just to do it. We finished with time to spare and I decided if there, to ask if there are any alternatives to the cafeteria. As frankly, the food so far has been subpar. The sense Shizune and Misha arguing among themselves about their favorite restaurants. All of them are downtown, so I don't think we have time to go all the way there. What about the bill? Are they arguing just for the fun of it? Maybe. They seem so distracted by it that they don't even notice the start of the actual lunch break. 
I look over my shoulder towards the back of the classroom. She seems to be studying her notes from the previous class. It's an odd sight. Everyone else in class is busying themselves with the lunch break. Socializing, gossiping, rearranging desks, the ones with the actual buffs and lunches mixed in and chattering like everyone else, only interrupted by short bouts of eating. And when I watch Hanako, it feels that I'm the only one who can see her, almost as if she was invisible, sort of hiding in plain sight. Is she being bullied? Is she isolating herself for the rest of the school on her own or class on her own accord? I see her look over her shoulder toward the classroom's rear door. Come to think of it, she hasn't turned a page since I've started watching her. I guess she's waiting for someone. What to do? I'm gonna go talk with her. I still feel bad for making her run away yesterday, so I'd better say something. Um, hey there, Hanako. Hisao? <gasps> well, at least she remembers my name. Hey, I just wanted to apologize for yesterday. I didn't mean to startle you or anything. I'm just new here and thought I should get to know my classmates. As Hanako looks up at me, I notice her scarring once more. It's a little bewildering that you can barely notice it from across the room, but it's so noticeable from close up. That, that's okay. It, it was my fault. No, that wasn't anyone's fault, it just kind of happened. So, are you waiting for someone? I saw you looking at the door before. Y yes Lily. Oh, you mean Lily the blind girl? Hanako only nods in response and I can't help but wonder if defining people through their disabilities is a faux pas of the worst kind or just normal here. I guess that explains why Lily took off after her yesterday. She seems like a nice girl. Are you two friends? Y yes as if hoping for Lily to appear, she checks over her shoulder again. Over her shoulder again. I think I'm making her nervous again. I hope I'm not disturbing you right now. No, no. That's not it. It's just easier if Lily doesn't come here. Oh, because it's hard to get her on the classroom. Not, really. Hanako's gaze drifts past my shoulder and towards Shizune. She isn't there? Hanako nods again. What about her? Don't they get along? Hanako shakes her head. Clearly, this is something she doesn't want to talk about. It does make a strange sort of sense. Shizune and Lily not getting along so well. Communication between the two would be all but impossible. It's hard enough talking to Shizune through Misha. Who, even when you can see who, whose hands are talking. Hanako is so focused in she's there that I'm the first to notice Lily at the door. Oh, she's here now. Hanako spins around to confirm this. Upon seeing Lily, she moves quickly to the door. Lily? Ah, Hanako. Good morning. Is the president here? Y yes Hanako glances over her shoulder at she's there again. As if to confirm she can't hear them, even though that's impossible. I suppose we'd best be off, then. Lily's sigh and tone of what seems like frustration makes me raise an eyebrow. I guess there's some kind of enmity between the two. It's intriguing, but that's not really something I'd ask about. I'm sure if they wanted me to know, then they would tell me. It's only my third day here. I should be trying to make friends, not finding out why people are enemies. Still, it's a little funny to find out that the school has little feuds, just like my old high school. Even if people are more tolerant of other bleh, more tolerant of others, they're still going to get on each other's nerves. Hey Lily, how are things? I'm sorry I made you run off yesterday. Oh my, is that he so? I didn't realize you were here. It seems that Lily is a little embarrassed about being so frank in front of me. S sorry, Lily. I thought you realized. No, it's all right, Hanako. Hisao, please don't worry about yesterday. It was just a misunderstanding. If you say so. I'm still working this place out. Well then, 
I think you'll find most people here are a lot more forgiving than elsewhere. If you're feeling a little confused, please don't be afraid to ask questions. Sure, I'll remember that. Um, Lily... Lily gives a small nod of acknowledgement. I'm sorry, Hisao, but we must be off. Hanako doesn't really look all that comfortable here right now, and Lily still seems a little embarrassed. I wonder if my apologies really made any impact. Mind if I accompany you two? I know I'm kind of pushing it, but Lily hmms quietly, still smiling. I'm sure that we can accommodate you, can't we, Hanako? She looks at Lily, then at me, then she freezes, wide-eyed. Sh- sure. Well then, shall we go? I'm sure Lily wouldn't do this so easily if she saw how scared Hanako looks. But it can't be helped now. Declining after the deal is sealed would only cause confusion and problems. So we leave, all three together. And that is where I'm going to end this part. Let's save. You sure you want to overwrite your save? Let's make a new save. Continue. Main menu. Yes. And this has been part three, I think, of Katawa Shoujo, and things are getting interesting. I think Lily and Hanako are the ladies I want to kind of try to get. They seem, I don't know, at least seem more agreeable. More like people I would want to hang out with, <laughs> to be completely honest with you. I don't know what's up with Shizune and Misha. But we'll find out as we play, won't we? If you like the video, if you like Katawa Shoujo, please give this video a like. If you have not subscribed to my channel already, please do so. Greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!